And the next Thank lecture uh, by Dr. Federico Rossi from uh, <clears throat> UCL. And the title of his talk is a Special Connectivity uh, Match the Direction Selectivity in Visual Cortex. Dr. Rossi works in Karandini and Harish Lab in UC at UCL and he interested interested in, interested in how elementary circuit of neurons orchestrate sensory and motor computation and how their multifunction underlying neurological dis disorder i think that we uh, think we have a will we will have a great talk and uh, i'm asking dr Federico, uh, i'm asking federico to start talk for 10 up 12 minutes here you go can you share your screen? And also unmute your microphone. Don't hear you. Yep. Yeah. Sorry for the um, for the lag. Let me see. Can you see my presentation now? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Sorry for the delay. Okay. So thanks for the kind introduction, Ezan. Uh, so today, so I am. Um, I will present the work I've done at University College London in the lab of Matteo Carandini and Kenneth Harris. And uh, if you're interested in this talk, uh, keep an eye out because it's uh, hopefully going to be published soon. So, and the talk is about how spatial connectivity matches uh, direction selectivity in the primary visual cortex. So I was interested in how the architecture of excitatory and inhibitory uh, connections orchestrates um, the response selectivity of neurons in layer two, three of the visual cortex. And as you've heard uh, beautifully from Elisabetta, these neurons um, respond selectively to gratings of specific uh, orientations moving in specific directions. So the, um, the, 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 the circuits models that are usually used to, to explain layer two, three tuning are based on the co-tuning of excitatory inputs. Uh, Indeed, selectivity can could be derived from um, uh, similarly tuned inputs from layer four, or could be refined and amplified by recurrent cotuned connectivity in layer two three. Further mechanisms might involve inhibition as well, like for instance, uh, inhibition to uh, anti-preferred uh, stimuli. Previous studies have found uh, evidence for this mechanism supporting orientation selectivity, but the origin of intracortical direction selectivity rem remains unclear. So to, 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 to uh, resolve this matter, I developed a, a pipeline to trace um, and record from the presynaptic inputs to individual layer two, three neurons. This pipeline is based on monosynaptic rabies tracing and in, um, improves uh, the success rate over, over previous protocols. And it works uh, roughly like this. So the first step is a single cell electroporation of a single uh, of an individual neuron in layer two, three of the mouse visual cortex. The neuron is electroporated with, um, actually, let me bring out a pointer. Uh, it's electroporated with a red, um, fluorescent protein DS red and the molecular toolkit for rabies tracing. As you can see, the post, this target postsynaptic neuron is beautifully visible in this uh, sagittal Z stack uh, acquired in vivo um, in the cortex of a mouse that expresses the uh, indicator GCAM6 in all neurons. When, we, when I inject a uh, DS red uh, expressing rabies virus, what happens is that the rabies virus can only infect uh, this po target postsynaptic cell, it will replicate inside these neurons and uh, travel retrogradely to uh, specifically spread across uh, synapses. And um, in, in fact, then the uh, presynaptic inputs sending a connection to the postsynaptic dendrites. So after the tracing, the presynaptic neurons appears also labeled uh, by the S thread. And to then classify these presynaptic neurons are as, as excitatory or inhibitory, I used a mouse line. I did this experiment in a mouse line that expresses the far red indicator M cherry in uh, inhibitory neurons. Okay, then to record the activity from these presynaptic ensembles, which are spread over a large uh, volume, I used volumetric to photon imaging. Um, I repeated this 
technique uh, uh, serially uh, sp to span a full volume from uh, from the surface to layer five, superficial layer five. And uh, and I did this while the mouse was uh, pass um, an awake mouse was passively presented with visual stimuli. Mm -hmm. Okay, so to test uh, and whether co-tuning uh, was indeed responsible for uh, for orientation and direction tuning, what I did first is to compare the responses of the postsynaptic neuron to the responses in its presynaptic ensemble. So this is an example recording from a postsynaptic neuron. You can see that um, you know this neuron uh, is a direction selective neuron and it likes very much a vertical uh, grading that drifts rightwards. When we look at the sample from its presynaptic excitatory inputs, we see that you know, many of them also like vertical gradings, but there isn't a dominance of neurons that like, uh, like rightwards grading. They, there is a fair number that like rightwards vertical gradings and leftward vertical gradings. And this result is confirmed when looking at, at the average across experiments. In the top panel, you can see um, the average tuning curve across postsynaptic neurons. And this is fairly direction selective with a big central peak at the preferred direction. While the bottom curve shows the uh, average distribution of preferred directions across uh, excitatory presynaptic neurons. Because this distribution has two peaks, this tells you that there is orientation co-tuning, but there isn't direction co-tuning. And this result uh, is confirmed even when we split neurons uh, across layer two, layer two three and, and layer four. The situation is slightly different for, for uh, inhibitory presynaptic neurons. Inhibitory presynaptic neurons tend to be less tuned than they, their excitatory counterparts and the presynaptic ensemble more diverse. In fact, there is just uh, a light bias for the preferred orientation of the postsynaptic neuron. Therefore, the, I conclude from this result that um, inputs co-tuning can um, generate orientation tuning Indeed, orientation is inherited from layer four and amplified in layer two, three, and perhaps sharpened by uh, broad, uh, broadly tuned inhibition. But cotuning cannot, from this data, explain direction, uh, the direction preference of the postsynaptic cell. Therefore, what, what can generate direction tuning? We reason that perhaps uh, there could be a way of generating direction tuning de novo from the, and in general, tuning de novo from the spatial arrangement of inputs in visual space. For instance, for orientation tuning, a possibility could be to sample for excitatory, from excitatory inputs that are aligned, co-aligned with the preferred orientation. In this way, the preferred orientation would trigger the maximal response. For direction tuning instead, we, uh, one could have um, specially offset uh, excitatory and inhibitory inputs along the preferred direction, which are also uh, with inhibitory inputs delayed in time with respect to excitatory input. Uh, this would a, a bar sweeping in the preferred direction would trigger excitation first and therefore a good postsynaptic response. A bar in the opposite direction would trigger inhibition first, but because of the delay, inhibition will suppress the response. These, these special models have been proposed before, and actually it's how retinal direction selectivity is, com is, is, uh, is computed, but haven't been demonstrated in cortex. So to study, to test if these are in, in, indeed uh, how cortex generates direction selectivity, I started, um, I looked at the spatial distributions of inputs. And at first I looked at the distribution of presynaptic inputs in cortical space. So these maps uh, show uh, the, um, the distribution of excitatory presynaptic inputs in red uh, uh, around the postsynaptic neuron and inhibitory presynaptic inputs in blue around the postsynaptic neuron. And these data are pulled across all experiments where, um, and these are the distribution in cortex where every po point um, is spotted as a function of cortical distance from the postsynaptic neuron. These data are pulled across many neurons that like different uh, preferred directions. And it doesn't appear to be a pattern in here. There is ju it's just a symmetric distribution and the only pattern is that excitation comes from a broader area than inhibition. But when we look at individual examples, a pattern appears. So in, 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 this, in these examples, I also plotted the retinotopy of cortex with gray isolines. And I also mapped the preferred orientation of the postsynaptic neuron uh, as a dot dashed black line. And I hope you can see that excitatory presynaptic neurons, the, the red triangles, are, more, are concentrated in the elongated territory that follow the preferred orientation of the postsynaptic neuron and tend to be 
more dense um, uh, opposite the preferred direction of the postsynaptic neuron, while inhibitory inputs tend to be more uh, symmetrically distributed and to prefer territories downstream, uh, sorry, uh, ahead of the preferred direction of the postsynaptic cell. These patterns become really striking when we uh, show the data aligned uh, across postsynaptic neuron in visual space. So these distributions now show um, the distribution of presynaptic neurons as a function of uh, um, visual distance from the postsynaptic cell and combine data across data sets after uh, each data set was realigned in visual space to, uh, to a template where the postsynaptic neuron likes uh, a vertical grading drifting, drifting rightwards as indicated by the tuning curves at the top. And so there are two striking effects here that you can appreciate. The first is that excitation is clearly uh, concentrate in, concentrated in the elongated region coaxial with the preferred orientation of the postsynaptic cell represented by the dashed line. And this is true uh, across individual data sets if we plot this axis of elongation um, against the postsynaptic neuron preferred orientation, while inhibition is more concentric and doesn't show this correlation. But also, oops, uh, but also there is a very clear offset between the center of mass of excitation and the center of mass of inhibition. Excitatory neurons favor uh, regions of cortical space and opposite the preferred direction of the uh, postsynaptic cell, while inhibitory neurons favor territories ahead of the preferred direction. And this is summarized by these plots for individual data sets where you see that this effect is significant. And most importantly, if we take the difference between excitation, the density of excitatory inputs and the density of inhibitory inputs in the regions ahead or opposite the preferred direction, we find that the resulting value effectively uh, predicts the <clears throat> neuron direction preferences. Um, okay, so this model uh, makes a prediction and, and the prediction is the following. If this offset is important to generate direction selectivity, then the direction preference of the postsynaptic cell, then uh, neurons that are more direction selective should also um, have show a stronger offset between their excitatory and inhibitory uh, distributions. So here I'm showing the average, uh, the contour of the average uh, presynaptic distribution for ex excitation and inhibition across uh, the data sets. And here I'm just showing you just the, the to data from a previous study to confirm that there is indeed this delay between excitatory and inhibitory inputs um, in layers to three upon visual stimulation stimulation. And what I'm plotting now is the, the same distribution for our weakest direction selective postsynaptic neuron and the, the strongest direction selective the postsynaptic neuron. And I hope that you can see that this offset is indeed more pronounced for strongly direction selective postsynaptic cell. And this is confirmed uh, by a strong uh, correlation between the amount, the size of this offset and the direction selectivity of the postsynaptic cell. So to conclude, I showed you that there are different circuits at play to, to, to produce orientation and direction tuning in V1. Cotune connectivity can generate orientation selectivity, but does not explain direction tuning. Instead, to explain direction tuning, spatial connectivity is important. Spatial connectivity is important both for orientation tuning, in fact, uh, and could sharpen the orientation tuning established by cotune connections, but it's fundamental to establish, it seems fundamental to establish um, direction selectivity with this uh, offset between uh, excitatory and inhibitory presynaptic connection. I didn't have time to talk to you about today, but we have also another exciting project uh, coming to a conclusion that suggests that these patterns of inputs might be primed by the uh, architecture of the dendritic trees of postsynaptic neurons that may show uh, similar spatial partners, but this is uh, for the future. So to conclude, I would like to thank, uh, of course, my advisors, uh, Matteo and Kenneth, and also people that um, are helping me with this research, uh, Charu and Noreen in particular, that are about to be the and drive projects I didn't talk about, um, and all the people from the wonderful environment of the Cortex Lab. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rossian, very great talk. Uh, there is one question by LR and asking that wanted to ask or not. Uh, okay, uh, how can uh, how can you rule out co-tuning without knowing the relative contribution of each neuron to the postsynaptic cell? 
could could you need could you still have larger synaptic waves yes this is an excellent as an excellent is an excellent question i'm not ruling it out um it was uh i'm just saying that um our data suggests that if you just look at the in at the number of presynaptic inputs you cannot expect cotuning to be uh, generating direction tuning and this doesn't you know there could be both mechanisms at, at play right so uh, i would expect in fact that there may be mm -hmm. great and another question by carson stringer stringer uh, do, does the connectivity make particular predictions about how response will change as a function of spatial and temporal frequency Yes, so I guess this is, uh, uh, is, a, is a very important question that unfortunately I don't have the data to address because one would have needed to play many more stimuli to these neurons, but uh, it would be great to test. And it, indeed it does, right? And it, it, it is known, for instance, that uh, direction tuning is a, is a property that can be actually reversed in, in, for visual neurons in the primary visual cortex when you change the spatial and temporal frequency of, uh, of the stimulus. And this uh, particular property uh, it is particularly in agreement with the fact that direction tuning is, a, is generated by these spatial circuits. Because by playing with the spatial and temporal frequency, you can adjust how the offset between excitation and inhibition interact uh, with each other. Thank you, Dr. Rossi. And let's switch to the next and last lecture.